Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Sebastian Passion and today I'm going to walk through on how to create a side menu in Angular. We're also going to look into responsivity of it. All right, let's jump into it. I've already created some HTML market boilerplate to shorten the video a bit. So it's just plain you unordered lists with list items, some span elements uh, and some icons. The icons are from Google uh, fonts icons. So you would go to fonts.google.com slash icons. You just press an icon and you would see that you can just copy a link. This is the link you would place within the in index HTML within the header tags. All right, so each list item we have contains a link. The link contains an icon and the icon is from Google fonts icons. And then we have just a link text, all right? as easy as this and we have different alternatives like home explorer short subscription library and history this comes from youtube so just copied a bit of the namings for it and all right so let's jump into it we're going to first and foremost jumping into the styling of it so we would first and foremost create a styling for the unordered list then we would add some stylings for it so we'd say hey we want you to have a zero margin would say you have a max width of 200 pixels fixed positioning so that it would appear on top of everything and we'd also make it a height of 100% with that some white color and some box shadow to make it visually appear like it's on top of everything else. Next thing we would like to do is essentially add some list item stylings. So we'd start with the logo type. Here we just want to try to align this icon up to the top alongside with the logo type, uh, which works now, but the logo type is way too big. So we need to solve that. First, we'll start by styling the menu trigger that we have, add some colors to it, just a pointer so that you visually can see that you can click on it. Next thing would add an image. Uh, I'm sorry, we would just add some stylings for the image. We would say, yeah, your max width 80% display block, some paddings for it so that it appears nice. Next thing we we'll jump into is the actual links that we have. So all of these list items essentially. So we'd add some padding, we'd flex the icons alongside with the text so that it would appear in the same line, which it did not before. And you can see that it's unequal spaced somewhere and this absolutely has to do something with the icons that you get from Google. Sometimes it's too much white space uh, on top of it, to the right, to the left, to the bottom. It, the icons just essentially are different from each other. So here we'll go ahead and add some text decoration on to remove the underline. We'll add some colors, we'll add some transition. The transition, in this case, we're adding it for the future. So this will automatically make the actual links rearrange itself. You, I will show you later, it will make total sense. So we also have some hover effects on the icons. We remove the hover effect from the menu, it does not make sense to have it. So for, as for the link icon, we'll add some styling, some background coloring, uh, some border radius, 50% makes it a circular appearance, some padding, some font size and margin to the right of the text. Uh, next thing we do is essentially add the link text, it just decreasing the font size and adding some padding so that it appears like quite nice. Uh, next thing would be to, to add some stylings so that we can add some responsivity. The reason to why I'm using a mix-in is because we want to use the exact same snippet that we just added uh, for both responsiveness, but also when you trigger and click on this link when you are in, uh, in a web view, for instance. All right. So the first thing we would like to do is that if it's a resp like if if you're in here, you would like to say that I want the logo type to have a centered content. Either it would be the menu trigger or it would be for in this case, we just say display none on them on the image because we don't want the image to be previewed when it's too small. Second thing we would like to do is to say each list item that we have, instead of having them stacked on this way, we want to shift it so that the icon would appear on the top and the text would appear below the icon. So in this case, we would say flex direction column and justify center will centerize them within the screen. We also add a, a different padding to the link so that it goes on top and bottom instead of the sides to, to shrink it as much as possible. We'd also shrink the size of the text and we'll also remove the margin of the link icon because they will be stacked on top of each other. It does not make sense to have a margin right on the icons. All right, 
So when once we have added this mixin, we can also go ahead and add it to the uh, is like if you would have a state called is menu open, which it most definitely will be from starters. This is how it would appear. And this is, is in fact what we're going to have as our responsive menu. Next thing we would like to do is to add some some sort of a media query and say when you are on, on a screen that has maximum 600 pixels, we won't include all of the responsive menu things that we added on top here. This can be reused. As you can see, it's reused in two different sections. And the last thing we want to do is we want to say the logo type that we have in this case we want to remove the menu trigger because on mobile in this case for this design we decided that we did not want to have any menu trigger and rather we would like to have the image of the company instead and yeah that's it we'll have some margins for it and so on all right i think this is it for it so the thing we can do now is we need to jump into the ts file actually to add some logic to essentially open and close the menu so we'll just create a parameter called this side menu open next thing we'll do is just to create something a function that essentially just toggles this variable it will set it to true if it's false and so on so next time it will always be a, like a it will shift values at all times all right so once this is done on the html file we need to add some logic here so just be aware we added this styling for is many open so that we can use this in the html by just saying on flags like if i would just add this logic to the to the list item so it 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 would be is many open if is side menu open all right let me make sure that it's spelled correctly side menu open sorry for the inconvenience of the naming where which i have a capital m here and small m there but let's not care about that too much now so once we added this logic with the is menu open all of this logic would then appear to be working so we would just remove all of this stuff if the menu is open because we don't want to have a responsive menu if it's open and it's on desktop view this is something you need to keep in mind because if it's on mobile view it will be working on this one all right so what we can do is now in fact try to click on the button to see what it works oh yeah of course we have forgotten to add the click event here so we can just say click and when we click on this we want to say toggle side menu all right so when we toggle it you'll see that it should change and here's where the transition comes in right so i before i spoke about transition because if we wanted it to be simulating that it actually goes from stack view into like a, a another sort of view if i remove the transition you'll see that it will automatically just flicker and jump like in this way so it would be you would not be really sure what's happening whether you're re-rendering something in this way you can see that actual content is being moved and so on all right so this is the desktop view of it you want to be able to maybe if you want to work on a greater view you want to be able to toggle it in this way maybe you would have more control in, to have it bigger or smaller it's all up to the user so the last thing you can do now is essentially we can go ahead and trigger the responsiveness because as i mentioned before we did not want to have uh, the logic of it to be appearing in another way so if i would be tilting the the menu now you see that instead of having the toggle up here we have the logo type this is just for this use case there are other use cases where you want to have um, you want to have this switch to a top menu and when you press it it would appear on the side in this way all right this is a short way of actually creating a responsive side menu in angular if you have any questions or anything suggestions please leave a comment subscribe and like thanks for watching guys all the best take care